Our perception of education has changed a lot over the past centuries. We have expanded our idea of education and accepted that it also can and should happen outside of the classroom. However, this didn't happen overnight. It's been a long struggle for everyone to have access to education, and it is not over yet. Let's take a look at the past and see how we got where we are today. Less than 300 years ago, schools and universities were for boys only. So instead of going to school, the girls learned manners and housework. The reason that girls weren't allowed to attend school was based on several beliefs. For example, schooling would divert women from their main role, to be housewives and take care of children. Education was only for men. Educating women was against God's will. Now, it would be great if these beliefs had remained in the past, but unfortunately, they still exist today. Women fought hard to have access to education and at one point they managed to create schools designed only for women. Unlike men's schools, which were funded by the governments, women's schools were self-funded. That meant that they were only able to teach the most important things that women would need in their household activities. Even then, a university education for women remained a dream. At the end of the 19th century, more and more women insisted on continuing their education and to have access to a better education. Women began establishing their own colleges to teach the future generation. In 1732, Laura Bassi was the first woman in the world to become a university lecturer. She had to defend 12 theses in order to be considered a candidate for the position. But in the end, she was approved. Despite her success, Bassi was subject to two conditions for teaching. First, not to teach classes consisting of only male students, and second, not to give public lectures. Women's struggle for equal rights in teaching remains fruitless. However, thanks to Bassi's perseverance and will for constant improvement, the path for women professors was begun. It is inspiring to know that the women before us fought for a better future for themselves and the generations to come. Okay, now that we have looked at the past, let's take a look at the present and some of the countries where the fight for women's education continues. Malala Yousafzai is an ordinary girl from Pakistan. She actively supports the right to education for women in the country she lives in. Her father is a principal of a girls' school and her mother is a woman left without education due to the dogmas of the tribe in which she grew up. From an early age, Malala took an active civic stance against the restrictions imposed on the female population by religious fanatics, creating publications for the BBC. This inevitably angered local Taliban groups, for whom she became a major ideological enemy. According to statistics, 72 million young girls worldwide are denied the right to attend school. It is Pakistan, Malala's homeland, that ranks second in the number of children deprived of the right to education, as many as 5.1 million. On October 9, 2012, Malala, when she was only 15 years old, left school and boarded the school bus. In the middle of the road to her home, the Taliban stopped the vehicle, stormed in and shot her in the head. She was taken to a hospital in England and her life was saved. Then she gained popularity and began lecturing at a number of universities on the importance of education. In 2014, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for her fight for access to education for all children, making her the youngest Nobel laureate in history. She shared with the United Nations, the terrorists think they have changed my goal and stopped my ambitions, but nothing has changed in my life. Other than that, the weakness, fear and despair in me have died. In their place came strength, power and courage. I am here to defend the right to education for every child. We mentioned to you the ideology that has prevented women in the past from accessing education. You see, even now, in many countries, these beliefs still exist. Will the role of women change in the future? Look around you and see what your beliefs are how what you do affects your future and the one of the next generations. We are talking about outdated understandings, but how many of these ideas are still around every day for many people? 
We will end with a quote from Malala, which we hope will inspire you to remember the meaning of education. Education is education. We must try to learn everything and then choose which path to take. Education is neither Western nor Eastern. It is human.